Hey, what's up everybody? Media 44 coming at you with another video. Alright, so the Los Angeles Lakers played the Utah Jazz tonight. And I didn't see a single second of it because I've had issues with my 5G all day long. Haven't been able to upload anything. Probably won't even be able to upload this. But I did get a chance to see highlights of the game just now. And I just wanted to react to those highlights. First of all, great bounce back game for Russell Westbrook. He really played well. Let me turn on some light in here. There we go. Bounce back game from Russell Westbrook. He played very well. Um, and, you know, what you really want to see is that bounce that we saw in that dunk that he had at the end of that second quarter. Uh, when he dunked on Rudy Gobert, one of the great dunks of his career, uh, you understand that the bounce can still be there. It may not be there consistently, but he can tap into it. And that's what the type of energy that I was hoping he would tap into uh, today. Because he had some games there where he looked old and slow, you know, and... Um, the motivation has always been there from, for Russell Westbrook. It's the one thing that he brings to your team no matter what. And um, the con being able to convert and being able to, 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 to stay under control, that, however, was not there. Tonight, he had a bit more of that. It was there. He was hitting his jump shot. He was playing with the type of pace that you are used to seeing Russell Westbrook teams play with. He had that rhythm tonight. And if we can tap into that more so, going forward, uh, we'll be happy with his production. Um, that's really what it comes down to. We just hadn't been playing at the pace that Russell Westbrook plays at. <laughs> so, yeah, I was very encouraged by what I saw from him. Uh, Stanley Johnson earned his money tonight. I know we've been giving him 10-day contracts. Obviously, we believe he's going to be someone that we keep long-term. I think we're just buying ourselves time by doing that. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, he's still working hard to try to show us that he's deserving of a spot. Um, and tonight, he put forth his best effort, maybe his best game uh, in his career, maybe. I don't know, but uh, it was certainly his best game as a Laker, and his basketball IQ was on high display. Uh, he was making plays for himself and others, driving at the basket, um, taking what the defense gave him. Uh, there were certain, certain situations where you know, they weren't respecting his jump shot. He was able to step into a mid-range jumper that was really impressive. It was kind of one of those situations where he looked around and he was like, oh, okay, y'all ain't going to guard me, so let me step up and shoot it. And that's exactly what we want our players to do. See, that's the thing. When, you know, when you are not known as a player who can shoot or known as a player who can do various things, defenses will allow you to do them. And that that's something that, that players can be aware of and take advantage of. We've had Rondo in the past take advantage of that a lot. You play off of him, three-point line, you knock him down. He'd go three for four in a game because of that type of stuff. So, you know, it's something that if you're able to hit the shot can be can be very deadly uh, for your team when a, when a team plays off of you and doesn't scout you properly. So I was very happy to see Stanley Johnson take advantage of that, particularly in a couple of plays tonight. But just overall, his game was excellent. Um, he most definitely gets the game ball. Uh, he was stringing together uh, play after play after play in various ways. It wasn't just him doing one thing. He was passing. He was rebounding. He was making defensive plays, getting snatching the ball from others. Uh, just just doing all the stuff that you want to see a guy do uh, to help his team when he knows that, that the team is deficient in his area of expertise. And that's exactly what it is. It's, he plays defense, and he knows we don't play defense. So the fact of the matter is, when you when you call his number, uh, he can immediately come in and do what it is that you need him to do. It's just like Dwight Howard, you know. We don't have any rim protection. We don't have offensive rebounders. So when we call his number, he comes in, and he can do what it is that we don't have. And that's why I think it's so important that we use these players. Um, you know, Stanley Johnson ain't done nothing but play good for Frank Vogel, and that's one of the things that I was saying in the video that I'm attempting to upload right now. You guys will check out my Sunday conversation. Um, about the Lakers today earlier. Uh, and one of the things I was mentioning there was that, you know, I, I just <clears throat> also want to make the point to say that just in general, the young players, you know, we have to give them an opportunity to, to, to step out and have their own identity on this team. I think that's one of the things that we can do um, that can kind of boost a little energy into this, into this team, a little chemistry into this team. It's just kind of the older guys are the older guys, right? We know who they are. They know what they're about. They probably click up together. I want those young guys to kind of do that. I want them to kind of look at this and say, 
the Lakers have been getting their butts whooped by young teams. And it's, it's, it's incumbent upon those young players on our team to kind of take that personal and be the young representatives on this basketball club that that can kind of be formidable. You know, it's kind of how I want it to be. It's like under normal circumstances, you, you the, the normal way things go is the, the older guys carry the young guys forward and that experience is what should lead your team. But I think it's, it should be somewhat of a different type of dynamic on this team. I want to see the old guys kind of go at it and try to figure and work themselves out and then the young guys step out front uh the thts the austin reeves malik monks stanley johnson step out front and make this your identity like make this your team that's what i want to see our young players do because we're struggling so many different areas uh we just need something to kind of help us along and i think you know given empowering the young players running plays for them Make, putting them in lineups together where they can, can flourish with one another, I think that's going to help us in the long run. I think that's going to help, especially come playoff time. You know, if they have a, a bench mob identity, you know, uh, something like that for themselves. Because at the end of the day, they are four of our best players happen to be the young guys. And we tend to try to use the older guys more so. And I just think that that's not a recipe for success in the second half of the season. Um, when the schedule is going to get tougher and the reason why it's tougher is because teams are younger teams are deeper and younger so we need to understand that recognize that and not lean so much on our vets in the second half of the season uh, especially when guys like Stanley Johnson and Malik Monk are playing well you know you want to give them those opportunities uh, so that's what I want to see that's kind of what I'm looking for um, Braun is going to be Braun Westbrook will either figure it out or not um, AD will either be healthy or not but if we can get THT, Malik Monk, Austin Reeves, and Stanley Johnson particularly to, to, to make this team their own in their own heads and, and, and to be a standout players on this roster with an identity and a reputation, I, th I think we, can, I think we can, can surprise some people. You know, I think that's what a recipe that we could work with. So that's just something i'm looking at um the offense looked better tonight i've been screaming that the offense needs to get better that's another thing that i mentioned in that conversation so we had some good looks tonight in that way defense looked a lot better as well just an overall better game but honestly fool's gold i'm not gonna lie it was fool's gold we beat the utah jazz because the utah jazz shot very 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 poorly uh, and i put those varies on there and i didn't exaggerate at all uh i think donovan mitchell mitchell jordan clarkson and uh, Bogdanovich were 0 for 18 from behind the arc, uh, shooting as a team about 25% from three or something like that. We shot just slightly better than that from three. Um, we kept our turnovers down, 12, you know, 14 is my magic number, so we've stayed under that recently, and I've been pleased with that, even though we've been having these struggles. Turnovers have been down. Uh, we've matched their rebound in total, so we were able to get away with what we were doing tonight. Uh, with our small ball lineups and different things, mainly because Stanley Johnson and Dwight Howard got out there uh, and gave us extra boards. Uh, but, you know, we shot poorly from the free throw line tonight, 60-something percent, that ain't going to cut it. We did a lot of things tonight and got away with a lot of things tonight that normally we wouldn't. Um, and if you think for one second that we're ready to beat anybody just because we ran into a Utah Jazz team that couldn't throw a rock in the ocean, you were sadly confused. Sadly, sadly confused. Nothing has changed, Laker fans. I'm gonna be the guy to tell the truth. Nothing's changed. We're in the same boat we were in last time we got when we got beat by 37 to the Denver Nuggets. Because fact of the matter is, the Utah Jazz should have beat us. And I said in the, in the video earlier that you guys will see at some point that the only reason why the Lakers should win tonight is because if the Utah Jazz don't do what they're supposed to do, and that's exactly what happened tonight. Utah lives and die behind the three-point line, and tonight they died behind it. When you go 0 for 18 on the road, you're not beating anybody. And that's the reality of the situation. So while I'm happy the Lakers played well and we had a good showing, if we would have played anybody that could shoot, we would have still lost. It's the truth. We still are in the same boat. Um, and and, and it's just very good that we were able to get away with it tonight. Some nights, you will run into good teams that won't take you seriously because of your reputation. I think the Utah Jazz came in here and thought they could beat us without any urgency to play their best. 
and I think that that, that carried over to them um, not being ready for what what happened to them, you know. And when, when you shoot too much, teams can take advantage, especially when a guy like Stanley Johnson who's fighting for his life out there, you know, they call his number. His number wasn't even called in the last game. We got beat by 37. You think he didn't take that personally? They called him up tonight, and he made his, made sure that we won tonight's game. That's what I saw. It was a killer instinct, and that's what I've been looking for and haven't found. Killer instinct has been there in regards to Austin Reeves. We saw it tonight with Stanley Johnson. That's what we need because <laughs> we haven't been fighting. These last couple games, the Lakers have not been fighting. And so to see us call some different people up to do some different things instead of going with the same old stuff tonight, I think was the way to go. You saw urgency for a change. And that's ultimately what you're hoping to see from this team for the rest of the season. If they're going to make the playoffs, they're going to have to play with the same type of urgency that they played with tonight. But even if they do, if the team doesn't find some way to rebound the ball more so, and start winning these rebounding um, categories, <clears throat> start making more out of some of these possessions, uh, we're still gonna have the same issues. We gotta find rim protection. And we gotta use that rim protection when we get it. That's gonna be it. And, and all this other stuff that we've been talking about in terms of effort and playing well and youngsters finding identity and all of that, that's just for us to feel better about what we see on the floor. We're still gonna lose if we don't find rim protection. So uh, that's what I know. <laughs> that's that's just the truth, y'all. We can talk about all kinds of other stuff, but at the end of the day, we got to find someone to play the center position. And so I'm hopeful the Lakers can pull a rabbit out of the hat. Uh, Rob Palinka, you're on the clock, buddy. We're getting antsy, obviously. But I understand that the, the you know, the, the waters are treacherous and uh, the resources are scarce. I get it. But we need you to make a move, man. Pull a rabbit out of the hat. The, uh, you know, turn the, the most important thing for him to do besides the big deal, which is to get rid of Russell's contract. The most important thing is to get rid of DeAndre Jordan's contract. Uh, we got to turn that into the space that we need. I think we don't use him. Uh, he should definitely not be on this particular type of contract this stage. And we need to just rid ourselves of that. <clears throat> I know that's a tall task, but it's probably more doable than getting rid of Westbrook or turning THT into a, a big time player or anything like that. Um, I think a lot of times you can get caught up in trying to make the big deal or get too wrapped up in trying to make the big deal that you uh, don't focus enough on some of the other deals that'll help you make the big deal later if the big deal can't be made now. I think we need to kind of get Jeremy Grant stuff out of our mind. Even if, if necessary, get all of the big trades out of our minds and just focus on how we're going to acquire certain types of assets that are going to help us in the offseason. Because like I, like I said earlier, I still believe this. This season is a wash. You know, It's only going to go as far as a hurt AD and an old Bron going to take us. We got to start getting assets. And that's the way forward, man. All this other stuff about winning games, beating Utah when they shoot this poorly, that don't move me, man. I've watched too much basketball over the years to get excited about that. Just like I didn't get excited about the Denver loss. The bigger picture is... We're in a situation where we need to get assets, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's all. And that's where my head is as a Laker fan. And <clears throat> excuse me. And that's what I'm telling you guys. Just let's let's zoom out as fans. Put the narrative out there that we don't want to be without picks. Put the narrative out there that we don't want to suck later on, because that's what it's about. We already suck right now. We're living with that. But we don't want to be without later. That's what I'm about. BDF 44. I thank y'all for watching. Good win, Lakers. Congratulations, Brody, on getting off the ground. That was a huge, huge boost. I think it's going to help you. Um, but this team is so bipolar, man. We could come out and lose by 30 in the next game. Wouldn't, wouldn't shock me. We can go on a five-game winning streak. Wouldn't shock me. Nothing shocks me. We have the talent to do the extraordinary, but we've shown that we're capable of doing nothing. And so it's night to night with the squad. At the end of the day, we're 500, and I don't, I don't think that's our – I don't think we are a record. I think we're worse than our record, truly. And I can say that after a good win. <laughs> but either the way, uh, either way, Stanley Johnson was a great acquisition. Uh, if we keep doing stuff like that, we can get a lot better and we can change the narrative. Uh, but we have to do stuff like that. Stanley wasn't here at the start of the season. 
Look how much he's helping us right now. We got to keep doing moves. So that's what I got to say, man. BDF44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.